Let's talk about the war in Ukraine. Russia is hiking its defense spending in 2025. It will be up by 25 percent, which means defense spending will account for over 6 percent of their GDP. This is the highest since the Cold War. But what explains this mammoth spending? And it could be the Russian economy. It looks resilient, but it is under pressure. Right now, the only thing sustaining the Russian economy is the defense spending. It looks good in the short term, but in the long term, it could be a problem. In fact, economists believe that Moscow could be in recession if it chooses to end the war. Our next report tells you why. За Россию! За победу! Ура! It's day 949 of the Ukraine war. The front lines remain unchanged. Fighting continues. Russian troops are making advances in the east. The Kyiv army remains stuck in Kursk. It looks like the war isn't coming to an end anytime soon. But Ukraine has a different view. President Zelensky believes peace is closer than the world thinks. However, it seems Russia doesn't share the same viewpoint. It's preparing for a long war, and you can see it in its draft budget for the next year. Moscow is hiking its defense spending by 25% for 2025. It will rise to 13.5 trillion rubles, around $145 billion. Defense spending will now make up for 32% of the 2025 budget. It will account for 6.3% of the GDP. This will be the highest level since the Cold War. Not just that, Russia is also focusing on national security. That's separate from national defense. It will spend 3.5 trillion rubles in 2025, which is about $38 billion. So put together, Moscow will spend 17 trillion rubles on just defense and security. That's a lot of money, and Russia needs to raise it from somewhere. So they have cut down spending in other sectors. Take social spending, for example. It's decreasing by 16% in the 2025 budget. Now, what Russia is doing is called military Keynesianism. It's spending money on the military to boost the economy. This is how it works. The government spends a lot on defense. These investments create more jobs. The money circulates through the economy. Overall demand goes up and economic growth gets a temporary boost. We can see that with Russia, despite sanctions, the economy remains resilient. This year, it will rise by over 3%. But here's the problem with this strategy. In the long run, it's not sustainable. That's because military spending cannot boost long-term productivity. The society can't benefit from it. In fact, it only diverts resources away from essential services. And that's already happening in Russia. So why then is Moscow doing it? It's because military spending is the only thing propping up the economy. Right now, it may look resilient, but there are some warning signs. The first is inflation. Consumer prices rose by 9% this year compared to last year. In September, the Bank of Russia hiked interest rates. They are up to 19%. That's the highest since the Ukraine war began. There are currency problems too. Moscow is sanctioned by the West, and that means a limited access to dollars. Its oil revenue is also plunging. All of this doesn't paint a very good picture. In fact, economists believe the Ukraine war is the only thing preventing Russia from plunging into recession, which explains the mammoth defense spending this time. But can Russia sustain this? Moscow's budget deficit is going up. 
This year, it will be 1.7% of GDP. That's up from the projected figure of 1.1%. That means the government is spending more money than it's earning. While Russia believes it can live through anything, the reality begs to differ. First Post decodes the U.S. election. Explains how America chooses its president. Your primer on the race to the White House. Everything you need to know about how America votes. And its global implications. U.S. Election Explained, every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.